What's going on all my New Japan heads out there? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Chris Black's NJPW Report. I am, of course, the natural Chris Black of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, independent professional wrestler, and everybody's favorite narcissist. On today's show, I'm going to cover everything that went down on night three of the 2021 New Japan Cup. We are still in first round action. As this tournament is being spread out, there's normally about two or three tournament matches. And then, you know, we have some undercard matches that is designed to preview some upcoming matches. So night three, technically four, if you count the anniversary show, we have six matches tonight to go over. Two of them are tournament, our first round of tournament matches. The other ones are basically undercard. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the review. In the first match, we have Suji taking on Uramura. So we get some young lion action. Well, plus you got to get Suji ready for his match against Nagata coming up in uh, a couple days. Young lion matches are some of my favorite they really sh are able to show their knowledge and skills at mastering the basics while still putting together a good match. Suji is perfecting that flying body press. It looks really good. I believe they call it Mount Suji now. <laughs> again, again, I really enjoy watching these young lion matches. If you are a aspiring professional wrestler or if you're training to be a pro wrestler, hell, even if you're green and only got a couple years under your belt, Pay attention to these young lion matches. Watch how well they know they show that they know the basics. Never, ever, ever forget the basics. This is someone who's 18 years in the business talking right now. After some nice back and forth sequence, getting back to the match, <laughs> Suji gets the roll up pin for the victory over Uemura, and he should. Uemura is not in a tournament. Suji is. He needs some momentum going forward. So Suji picks up the victory. Nice roll up anyway. I might have to steal that. In the next match, we have the team of Honma and Kojima taking on Jeff Cobb and the Great Okan. This is a filler match. There is nothing at stakes. No previews of upcoming matches. Jeff Cobb already took out Kojima. Honma was already taken out of the tournament by Minoru Suzuki. Great Okan is moving forward as is Jeff Cobb. But again, whatever. The United Empire is very dominant in this match. Although Hanma and Kojima did put forth a valiant effort, the match lasted longer than I thought it would, but Jeff Cobb takes Hanma for tour of the islands and does pick up the pin. Third match. We have the team of Taguchi, Juice Robinson, Hanare, and Tanahashi taking on Dick Togo, Kenta, Jay White, and Evil. This is another filler match. Evil and Tanahashi got buys in the tournament, so they haven't competed in any tournament action as of yet. They don't have first round matches. They go right into the second round. Evil gets a buy because, well, he won last year's New Japan Cup. And I assume Tanahashi gets a buy because he is the never open weight champion, which since the Intercontinental Champion is being absorbed basically by the heavyweight championships, it kind of makes the never open weight title the secondary title or would that be the united states title i i don't know i kind of think it's going to be the never open weight title but anyway let's get back to this match uh white will be facing hanare on the 10th of this month kente has already eliminated juice robinson from the tournament um after some switches at the start of the match juice and kenta start the match so we get a little bit of more action from their first round match, Bullet Club kind of leaves Kenta hanging while the face team kind of teams up on him. And Bullet Club is on the outside but pulls their opponents out there with them, take control of the match. Jay White has been doing his best to avoid Hanare, uh, but White has, to, White has to face him when he is tagged in. We get a nice preview of what their match is going to look like. Uh, Dick Togo tags in which probably means this match is coming to a closing. We get a high fly flow from Tanahashi and Dick Togo. Surprise, surprise, he gets pinned. Hanari goes after Jay White after the match, throwing him into the barricades. I don't know what White did. He must have pissed in his Cheerios or something, but he just is at Jay White. 
to the point where he has to get pulled off by some of the young lions. <laughs> Jay White scurries away like a scalded dog. But we all know that guy is slick as a fox, so he's going to have something planned for this match. I'm looking forward to it. All right, next match, we have Chaos Team members Sho, Goto, Okada, and Ishii taking on LIJ members Bushi, Naito, Sonata, and Takaki. Ishii versus Sonata will be coming up in the next day or so, so we will be getting a preview of what their match will be like. Okada and Naito, unfortunately, is out of the tournament. They were eliminated by Okan and Shingo Takaki. Goto and Tagaki, who advanced to the second round, will be meeting on the 13th. So, with that in mind, Goto and Shingo decide to start the match off. Uh, the matches between Chaos and LIJ are normally good. LIJ usually is more the heels during the match, being the aggressors. Okada became the target of LIJ's attacks. I mean, why not? He seems to be... I mean, you attack the guy that is already injured, so... Ishii tags in and mixes up with Sonata Ishii take, is just talking big shit during their interaction you know how Ishii is he, you give him a shot and he just looks at you wipes it off like you know a fly I love watching Ishii talk shit during his matches <laughs> we get a little more action between Shingo and Goto as they are both tagged in shortly after Sho gets tagged in but is quickly taken down by LJ members the rest of the, ta the Chaos team runs in and we get a flurry of attacks by both groups. We get back down to Sho and Shingo and after delivering a last of the dragon, LIJ picks up the win. We get a couple of intense stare downs between their future opponents, especially Sonata and Ishii, who looks like they're just waiting for the other one to blink. Okada <laughs> just backs off Ishii like, okay, just save it for the match. All right. Getting into the first of the two first round tournament matches, we have Gabriel Kidd taking on Zack Sabre Jr. So the young lion is taking on one of the veterans. This is a great opportunity for Kidd to test his wrestling ability against the technical master himself, Zack Sabre Jr. Kidd does a great job going hold for hold with Zack, but it seems like Zack has an answer for everything that he tries. Kidd came ready for Zack. But it's only a matter of a time before Zack takes the lead working on Kid's neck. Kid fights off Zack and puts puts him in a single leg crab, but Zack was able to get to the ropes. Zack starts inviting him to strike, and we all know that Zack Saber Jr. will bait you in and then put you in a lock quick, fast, in a hurry. So we get some very stiff looking sh strikes between these two, with Kid actually dropping Zack at the end of that exchange. When Zack goes down, Kid starts wasting too much time by playing to the crowd. He needs to stay on him, but you know, rookie mistakes. Zack turns things back in his favor, trying to tap Kid with an arm bar, but Kid just will not stop. Zack escapes the Billy Robinson butterfly suplex that Kid's been using as a finisher and caught him in a triangle, and he has no choice but to tap out. Hey, no shame to Kid. He lasted 15 minutes with Zack Sabre Jr. That's not something to feel ashamed about. It's pretty good. The match could have ended a lot sooner. Zack Sabre Jr. was talking shit through the match, saying, hey, you're here with the big boys. He's not lying. Good showing by Gabriel Kidd, even though he lost. Zack Sabre Jr. advances to the second round. And in our main event, we have Tenzan taking on Will Ospreay. Now, Will Ospreay is a heavy favorite to win the whole tournament, but we shall see. Um, he has to go through quite a few names on his bracket. But as the match starts out, starts out pretty hot, spills to the outside, Will Ospreay gaining the advantage. Oh, there's definitely some heat between Tenzan and the United Empire. So Tenzan seems to be at a dis disadvantage in the early stages of the match, but does start to make it a more even match between the two Tenzan just refuses to stay down and fights back at every opportunity he locks in that anaconda vice on Osprey attempting to make him tap out but Osprey gets to the ropes Tenzan gets few very close near falls but to no avail Osprey is trying everything in his arsenal to put away Tenzan but nothing works until he delivers the Stormbreaker for the win Will Osprey advances to the second round Loving the tournament so far. You guys loving it? I'm 
Really interested to see a lot of these second round matches um, as we move forward. But with that, let me go ahead and take it home. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of Chris Black's NJPW Report. Tune in next time as my coverage of the New Japan Cup continues. If you like my reviews, go ahead and hit that like button. Do that right now. If you are looking forward to my next upcoming reviews, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you are notified whenever new content is put up. You can find me all on social media. I have links in the description that will take you to my Facebook page, Instagram, as well as my Twitter. Also, got links in there for the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Facebook group. Give us a follow as well. Check out the podcast. New episodes drop every second and fourth weekend of the month, which means we have an episode dropping this Saturday. Be sure to tune in. Until next time, thank you for listening. I thank all of you for your support. Share this video with all your other New Japan friends. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Come get slammed.